Pictures of Hollis Woods, page 72. Chapter 8, The Time with Josie. For the next few afternoons, around five, the mustard woman called to chit-chat. That's what she called it. She was doing all the chatting. How was school? Burnt down. What did you have for lunch? Horse meat. How is Mrs. Cahill? Who? What are you drawing? Nudies. Hollis, she said slowly one night. Mrs. Cahill is old and has a tendency to forget. Josie was dancing in the street, giving me a hat with the veil, making popcorn at the movie. I just, I said more than I had wanted to. She doesn't forget everything, just some things. I stopped. The mustard woman would never change her mind. I raised my hand to the window. Drops of melting sleet were running down the glass. Under the kitchen table, Henry was an orange ball, with only his pointy little chin turned up. Henry hated sleet. Tomorrow is Saturday, the mustard woman began. I'll pick you up and take you to meet Eleanor, she paused. I didn't answer. That's her name, Eleanor. She's going to have lunch for us. I pulled the telephone card as far as I could. Then Sunday, if all goes well, she broke off. You'd be in the same school, and you could visit Mrs. Cahill often. I took the phone away from my ear and put it on the counter. I did it gently so there was no noise. I wondered how long she'd keep talking before she figured out I wasn't listening. It was gray outside. Josie's wooden figures were blurred and bent in the wind that had just come up. Josie couldn't stay alone. <clears throat> she might not remember when it was supper. She'd sit up all night watching movies. Beatrice. I picked up the phone and pressed the numbers. It rang 20 times. Answer, Beatrice. But then I remembered. For the first weeks, she'd be traveling around, she said. I pictured her in the desert, dry sun beating down, her sketchbook in her hand. I couldn't leave Josie couldn't stay. It was a puzzle. Something from years ago popped into my head. It wasn't winter. It was summer, and so humid, everything I touched was sticky. All afternoon, I thought about the pillow on the bed and how cool it would be against my head. I was surprised when it was as hot as the rest of the room. I reached down under the pillow to find something I had hidden there, a doll with, paint, with pale painted eyes. I whispered to her, asking if she was cooling off. And then someone came and pulled her away, tossing her on the night table. I waited until the woman out, walked out the door. And then I whispered a little more loudly so the doll could hear me. Don't worry, I would said. I'll save you in the morning. Why had I thought of that now? Save Josie. That's why. The sleet outside was turning to snow. It reminded me of Stephen. You'd love the snow in Hancock, he'd say. I thought of the summer house and branches. I hadn't been here in winter since I was a boy, the old man had said. But it was wonderful, so cold it hurt your teeth, the ro river frozen over, the animals coming up close to the house, everything was silver with ice. He had his, he had spread his wide hands, twisted icicles this long hanging from the roof. I used to knock them off and see how far I could throw them. He had laughed. My father had put in heat, so when you came inside it was warm. I'd dry my hands on the radiator till they almost sizzled. Winter. No one there in the house in branches. We'd stay, we stay in our house in Hancock now, plenty of snow there and nearer to school and the stores. How could I do it? How could I not? Josie was napping on the lilac couch. I went in and stood next to her, watching that beautiful face. She opened her eyes. How would you like to go away with me, I asked. To see Beatrice, she said. I shook my head. That's too far. Then where? She sat up, smoothing her hair with her papery, thin fingers. It was hard to get the word out words out. We'll take the car. The silver bullet, she said, nodding. It will be an adventure, I said. She smiled. Henry, you and I in the silver bullet will fly to the ends of the earth. I smiled back, trying to think. Food, warm clothes, gas with a silver bullet. It was Friday night. The mustard woman would come for me at lunchtime tomorrow. By then, we had to be long gone. Page 77, eighth picture, end of summer. We were frenzied that last night in August. That was Izzy's word, frenzied, and I drew it all. Stephen and I racing along the dirt road to buy beef jerky at the grocery store four miles away, sitting on a rock, pulling the jerky against our teeth as we counted the cars that went by on the highway, rowing up the river rapids and bouncing back in the robot, rowboat with bruises all over our legs and arms, climbing partway up the old man's mountain after the rain, slipping and sliding in the mud on the edge of the road, and we never stopped laughing. Anything we wouldn't think about my leaving. Anything. They told me what they'd planned. The four of us sitting on the porch. I never needed a picture of that night. 
It was in my head, every bit of it, in there forever. But I drew it anyway, Izzy with one of my hands in both of hers, the old man reaching out to hug me until I had no breath left, and Stephen blinking behind his glasses, trying not to let me see how close to tears he was, but I knew. I drew another picture of what happened next. Before I could think, I leaned over to kiss Stephen's cheek, stained with grease from working on the truck, captured there in that drawing forever. Both of us laughed, embarrassed, and Izzy said, Lovely. I'm going to try that too. And she leaned over to kiss his other cheek. We were still laughing as Izzy spread out her long arms. It's settled then, she said. You belong with us, this house. And the river, I said, is yours, the old man said, all of it. And Izzy's hard candy, Stephen said, rocking back on his chair, looking happier than he had all summer. Please let it be all right, I begged. I looking at Stephen's face, remembering all the arguments he and the old man had had. A lost lure yesterday, a rake left in the rain, the truck. Was it because I was there? Was the old man comparing him with me? Me? Wasn't that strange? Was trying to fit me into a family like jamming in a puzzle piece that didn't match. Would it ruin all the other pieces? I looked up at the mountain. The trees had just, had just a hint of fall color. The mountain looked soft, almost friendly. I thought about standing on the very top. Izzy leaned over. Hey, you two. Don't look sad. We still have one last weekend, remember? The last weekend. Last.